One night when I was... Music and cowboys go as well together as cowboys and music. Red Dead Redemption 2 has both. While not a perfect game, there's one aspect of this western that puts it above the other Sims games, and that is the campfire songs. In Red Dead Redemption 2, player character Arthur Morgan is part of a big gang led by the plan with a man, Dutch Vanderland. It's funny that he has family from the Netherlands and also looks like Captain Hook. In camp, you can do things like eat, sleep, do your chores, juggle unnecessary drama between friends, things that feel even more difficult to do in this game than in real life. But you can also hear some very interesting dialogue between other gang members, play cards in other tabletop games, tend to your horse, make a fucking spiffy new bag, have a rug made for you, get punched in the face, and the best part, the campfire songs. When the AI lines... So what are the campfire songs? Well... When the AI lines up right in this game, characters will meet up at the gang campfire and sing some songs. Sometimes it'll be a cappella, other times it'll be with a guitar or other instrument. For some songs, you can sort to rover, cop a spot on a log and join in. Arthur is a terrible singer, but he sings off key and off time with a glorious purpose. With the parts of the song that he doesn't know, he hums or he coughs. Different people lead the songs, get involved. Sometimes it'll be a solo and the, and the song might be a sad lament on the members in their precarious positions, or it'll be a snap-crackling snort fest on getting your meat tenderized. So many songs, so much variety. Today we're gonna pull a watch mojo and look at the top 10 can... Top... Today we're going to look at the top 10 campfire songs in Red Dead Redemption 2. This list is a mixture of what I think are the best songs, the general consensus on which one is the most popular, and also which ones are my favourites. I am only counting campfire songs, so anything from the soundtrack like the house building song or Unshaken, they don't count. It has to be a diabetic tune, song from the campfire camp table, on a boat or on a coach like Rye Whiskey, unlike the score or soundtrack, which is non-diabetic. The qualifiers I'm looking for are just basic enjoyment and what the songs accomplish, whether you can interact, what the songs tell us about the character and their relationships, how funny or upsetting the songs may be in a good way. It's a bit loose, but I think the video will, will work by the end. I was able to make this video thanks to the amazing work of Cal Meth, whose channel I'll put in the description. They isolated a lot of the audio from the game files and was able to put together the tracks that you hear as it is in the playlist they'll also put in the description. Basically puts together the songs as you could imagine to hear them on, like imagine if Rockstar released an official album of the Campfire songs. This is probably what we'd hear and it's really amazing work, Kalmanth. I'm really sorry if I'm not pronouncing that wrong. If, if I am pronouncing, I'm really sorry if I You did fantastic work here and the credit is all deserved. So everyone go subscribe to Calm Month and listen to their stuff. As weird as it might be to hear these tracks without the campfire crackling in the background, it is nice to hear them without the sounds of Dutch and Molly arguing or a boar squealing in the bushes at Shady Bell. So that's it for all of the disclaimers. Let's have a look at the best, in my objectively subjective opinion, campfire songs in Red Dead Redemption 2. First, let's get some honourable mentions out of the way. Javier's solo songs on guitar and vocals are beautiful. I can't pronounce the song names because I'm racist. Without the interaction though, it's more just a great tune to hear as you explore camp. He does have a beautiful voice though, and the songs themselves are really tight. Probably the most sellable songs if the Vanderland gang were to make an album. Can you imagine? The Vanderband? Come Bustle Bustle is great, and I was very much considering it for the top 10. To clear things up, I'm talking about the version with Uncle and the Ladies in the standard game. The epilogue was fun with this one too, the one that you hear after Charles, John and Uncle complete the house. Easily it's the best song to tap along to, but... 
I, I don't know. There's a lot of good songs in this. I wouldn't marry. I love hearing Karen and Susan getting along. This song is fun and feels very early country as far as the guitar goes from Javier. The singing is very much folk though. Great to hear them sing of their marital preferences. Not the best Karen and Susan song though. Reverend Swanson's I'll Never Get Drunk Anymore. One night when I was frisky From too much potent whiskey Like waves on the bay of that's all I have to say about that. Home dearie home. Pearson's concertina and Sean's amazing timbre make a great, sad duo. Beautiful scene. Despite still being drunk, it's the most serious I've ever heard Sean. It almost sounds like he's about to cry singing about home. Actually, a lot of these songs are about how good things used to be or how much they missed someone, sometime, something or someplace. I guess that's the theme of the game. Change. Change. Fuck, I can't believe these amazing moments can be missed. The Campfire song should have been mandatory. Can't get 100% of the game without listening to everyone. Fuck the ambient challenges. Keyhole in the door. A lovely soprano from Uncle. Just dudes singing about places where they like to put their pricks. One version with Sean and another one solo from Uncle. I like Uncle and Sean singing together though. California Stage Company. Another great uncle and ladies track about career change. This song paints a very vivid picture. It's like, you know, just the way they sing. There's something very vivid about the way they sing about it. I can imagine this Calif... It's weird. I can imagine this California stage company going through a gay viaje in Nueva Presa, where Abraham Reyes is holed up in 1911. Is that his family home? Uh, anyway, moving on. A Yankee ship. Sean and Pearson again. Much more uplifting, this one. Sean's voice could cure tuberculosis. If, if only he hadn't. Dan Taylor. Karen leads the song, Javier plays on guitar. We should have gotten more Karen in Red Dead Redemption 2. It's a cute little story. It almost seems to foreshadow John's turn from the business into an eventual rancher with Abigail as his wife. Three Mariners. Now, this is a bit of a controversial one. I love this mission. I will never reject fishing with Hosea and Dutch, but I think there's a better song that they sing in this boat. John Brown. A harmonica! This is not harmonica. This is just another hit. Pearson sort of leads this one with his duet pal Sean Headshot Maguire. These two are just a riot together. A brethren tune of brethren brethrening. I got a girl is a great introduction to the game and the songs the gang sing together. All the ladies sing a, un a unique little tune that feels like the most Red Dead campfire song. Maybe because it says Valentine, the name of the town they're going to. It just feels better ingrained into the world. A lot of these tracks in this video are traditional folk tunes that have been given a, a Red Dead coat, like Otis Miller, based on some some other guy. Great to hear Tilly on a track. I don't think we heard much of her in the other tunes, but the more members, the better. Buffalo Gals. Susan Grimshaw shows us what Dutch is missing on this one. Charles belts the harmonica and Susan belts a tune instead of Karen for a change. It is time for the creme de la creme, the top 10 best songs in the cowboy game. All right, I got one for you. <laughs> I asked that gal to give me some. I asked that gal to give me some. Number 10 is Taters. At me, I don't care. This is better than Three Mariners. Two fathers with their one song singing about rampant horniness is what great parenting is all about. If only Arthur's two dads were there for him in the end to sing about potatoes, Arthur is on point for once, in key and on time. The rowing going in time with the gents humming between singing about spud fucking is a wondrous thing. No wonder this got game of the year. It goes for less than a minute, but stands out amongst the tens of hours of content in this game because potatoes and sex go better together than music and cowboys. Uncle also sings this song solo when he's drunk. Well, uh, I know that he's always drunk, but like drunk for uncle. It's pretty cool too, but can't top Arthur and his dads. Otis Miller was a lad that killed many a man. He robbed the land a hat she trained. 
Number 9 is Otis Miller, a beautiful guitar intro from Javier before Uncle sings with Karen like a father and his daughter. Pearson chips in, pulling an Arthur by singing out of time and out of tune and humming half the lyrics. It's sort of invasive, but I love it. There's so much character here. The story about Otis Miller is really cool too. The song details his exploits as an outlaw before being killed by his own man, Charlie Tatum, looking for fame. Based on the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. I think that was a movie. Miller is one of the most famous gunslingers in the Red Dead series, maybe even more famous than Landon Ricketts. You could find a bunch of his books and even his gun in the game. It feels like there's a lot of history here. Maybe because there's a lot of history here. If Arthur gets really drunk in the open world, he'll sing lyrics from this song and give us a rip-roaring... Yeah! Or Otis had a wife, to mourn for his life. Three children, they were brave. But that cowardly killer that shot Mr. Miller has laid old Otis in his grave. Yeah! I kind of want to do my own yeehaw, but I'm going to restrain myself. To mourn for his life. I ain't got no father. I ain't got no father. I ain't got no father to buy the clothes I Number 8 is Poor Lonesome Cowboy, Sad Cowboy Hours. This slower tune is sung by a fair chunk of the gang and really encapsulates the tone of the game and life in the gang. They have happy, jubilant moments, but, but they're fleeting. They're on the run, scared and hungry. Who knows who's going to make it in the end? Their lives are running their course, and the utopia Dutch keeps promising doesn't seem worth it when you lose your soul. Still, getting out of it on an honest path after such a time can leave you wondering on how things could have been in this savage utopia. This is exemplified by Pearson looking sadly on a photo of him and the gang in the old days. It's almost about the loneliness each member feels. They've all been abandoned and forgotten by the world, and that's why Dutch's savage utopia seemed so appealing. They look out for each other, but for the most part, they're looking out for themselves. They're scared. They, they don't want to die. It's like they're reminding themselves, I am doing this for me. It just so happens, it helps the other folk. The ring dang do is coming, I promise. Oh, once I was a servant maid down in Maiden Lane. My, my master, master used to beat on me, my, my mistress, mistress did, did the same. same. Number seven is the Sailor Boy. Slash. Fare you well, dear Sean. Fare you well, I do. Rocks and mountains, I depart from. A prisoner for life. All right, so I'm kind of cheating with this one. Two Karen slash Grimstraw songs, but for good reason. Red Dead 3 should be about Karen coming out of the wilderness and sobering up before reviving Grimshaw like she's a friend zombie at the end of Shaun of the Dead. They're at each other's throats frequently in the game. A very intense mother-daughter relationship. But at the end of the day, they did care about each other. And they could have really come to understand each other if Shaun and Molly's deaths didn't drive them apart. Still... The Sailor Boy is such a great icebreaker for the Karen Grimshaw tension. It's just, alright, let's drop the whole lady act for a second. Stop washing those clothes, stop telling people off for taking it easy. Let's have a few drinks and sing about getting raw. Later, these two sing a song in Shady Bell that's much more sombre. A goodbye of sorts for Sean. They're not sitting at a table with drinks in their hands. Karen is working away and Grimshaw sits with a cigarette. They seem tired, drained from the goings on, and it really catches a depressing tone. I love these two together, and the first song is probably their best chipper duet. And the second tune is one of the best and unique in the game. It almost feels like a chore. They'd rather not talk about Sean's death. It'd be easier to just pretend they didn't care. Pretend it didn't happen. But they... They want to address it. They want to talk about it. It's like, honestly, the Sean's death is the one thing that I wish they addressed more in the game. They kind of 
brush past it after Jack was kidnapped. That's the thing. It's like Arthur came back to camp and he was ready to just like, yeah, Sean was killed. But it's like, no, Jack's been taken. It's like, oh, okay. It's like at that point they weren't worrying about dead gang members anymore. Anyway. A pretty creature, a miner's daughter, and her name was Clementine. Number six is Clementine. In the epilogue we get this one. Abigail's beautiful singing voice that we rarely see any of in the game with Jack's fucking boss harmonica skills. There's a dreadful irony in Abigail singing a song about a guy who couldn't save his love from drowning because he couldn't swim. With that darkly funny thought aside, it is a really sad song and lyrically just messed up. But there's a faux bittersweet tune to it that really does a great job putting its own full stop on the game as far as campfire songs go. The very ending to the game is bittersweet in its own right. John's with his family, they're enjoying their new life, Mike is dead, and they have plenty of money to live thanks to Dutch leaving them the black water money. But we know any moment Edgar Ross is going to swoop in and fuck things up for the Marston family. For now though, let's enjoy the song. I saw somebody's gameplay where during this interaction they stare at Abigail and Jack as John and just take it in, their joy and contentedness. Then next to them, Uncle just spouts out, You seem lost in something, John. I'm pretty sure this is a scripted response to the player just idling out. Camp and, and family members will be like, You all good? Something on your mind? If you stand still in camp or stare at them. But accidentally, the AI script made the moment even more beautiful. In a way, John is miles away, taken there by his wife's voice and his son's harmonica. He's right where he wants to be, but it still feels like a dream, like it's too good to be true. And perhaps it is. Of a flash packet. A packet. Number five, goodbye, fare ye well. Pierce and rips the concertina back out for this one. A sauntering solo where he sings of life on the seas. Farewells and so longs off the docks as life at sea carries you away. Clearly he misses the navy. He's not the best singer, but it still comes across very genuine and hearty. And if you get this song while in Beaver Hollow, it's even more depressing. Pearson never got to go back to the Navy, and he lost his life in the gang as well. And he's married now. He's happy with his new life, and by, like by the epilogue, he seems to enjoy the store. But he definitely seems to be marred by some nostalgia. That's the thing, it's almost like he didn't appreciate the gang because he was worried about the Navy. It makes you think it's just like... Was he nostalgic during his times in the Navy as well? He was thinking about times he was going to get back to land. He was nostalgic as well when he got to the gang about the, about the Navy. And now he's nostalgic with his wife and the store about the gang. So it's like, what if he gives the store to his son and he's going to be nostalgic about the store? This song and the heavy breaths that follow it are very telling of Pearson's character. And the song... It's an easy favourite. Goodbye, fare well. Goodbye, fare well. Oh, Molly, oh, Molly, it's for your sake alone that I leave my old parents, my house, and my home. Quack, quack. That's the most on time Arthur has ever been while singing. So confident that he even added that very light syncopation to contrast the other men. It makes him forget the next two or so lines, but his spirit is what matters here. This romantic tune with Sean gliding over the instrumentals with a strange gruff grace that only he can pull off tells a fair bit about Sean and his relationship with Karen. We don't see too much of it, and what we do see comes across as young love, but perhaps Sean was afraid of getting attached to Karen, or Karen to him, and with his death, 
we see just how hard Karen starts to fall. Maybe they did truly care for each other. Maybe it was just the the scenario they were put in, but who knows? De la Sierra Morena, Cielito Lindo, vienen bajando. Number three is Cieleto Lindo, the last high note for the Vandalin gang. After Jack is rescued from Bronte, the gang have a party and almost everyone joins in with the song led by Javier. What I love about this is that it shows the gang's camaraderie. This whole time we've seen the gang's songs and Javier's songs and they're very separate. Javier's flamenco-ish guitar playing and singing in his native language doesn't get joined in by the other members, causing you to wonder if they care to know it at all. But then... <laughs> the Marston family are also together. John's accepted Jack as his son and really seems like he's going to give it a go. It's completely player choice, but if Arthur joins everyone at the fire then looks over to the Marstons, it's like he can recognise it too. This is really one of those moments you want to stay in, especially considering where the game goes after this. This feels like the happiest moment we see of the Vandalin gang in Red Dead Redemption 2. Fitting that the song itself is just telling everyone to be happy. Lenny, Susan, John, Abigail, Karen, Mary Beth, Hosea, Dutch, Jack, Pierce, and Uncle Javier. Everyone you'd want there in that moment because Bill's off fucking talking about what he would do in the army or Kieran pulling himself away from the moment because he's like, I'm still not ready to be there. But if you go to talk to him after this, he'll be like, oh, joining with you guys was the best choice I ever made. It's like he was finally starting, oh, just finally starting to accept himself in this new situation. But then things happened after this. The years creep slowly past Lorena. Snow. Number two is Lorena. Many may not expect this one, and I, I can understand that, but honestly, I can never look past this. By herself, usually sitting by the campfire, sometimes you can see Karen singing this one. She's a little bit tipsy and tuck it out, but it does not take away from just how isolated and amazing this feels. Get this interaction on a good night, starry sky, and quiet around camp as Karen sings a song that sort of mirrors her own journey, a lonely sad life full of drinking and bitterness. Karen can be seen singing this before and after Sean's death, and in either case, the song is extremely strong. She doesn't really sing it with any thought of key or timing, but the half-seeing, half-talking approach makes it feel like she's truly thinking out loud here. It's kind of uncomfortable, very candid, but very effective at conveying Karen's anxieties and it's easily one of my favourite tunes. Apparently there's another version that she sings where she's not as drunk, but it's a bit more tuneful. I've only ever gotten the version where she's drunk and sings it kind of roughly. I can imagine having a playthrough where you hear her, I guess, nice version first, and then the drunk version after Sean dies, and I imagine that could really immerse you too. It's unfortunate that this really strong aspect of the game is missable. I wish this amazing stuff was more ingrained into the experience and wasn't only based on luck. I once sat next to Karen as Arthur while she sang this song all by herself at the campfire. Arthur sat there in silence besides her like a genuine attempt to comfort her and reach an understanding. There are many times in the game where Arthur can awkwardly <laughs> insert himself into a conversation at camp or observe other interactions. And he's just standing there unflinching as Dutch and Hosea's entire relationship is put to the test right in front of him. Sometimes you can interact with the conversation and other times it's just Okay, I'll catch you later then. This, however, sitting with Karen in solemn silence felt truly well contextualized and made for a unique moment that felt a little off script for what Rockstar had in mind. Great moment is great moment, good song, 
It's a good song. There tis hard to heart. Tis dust. Tis dust beneath the sun. I've completely forgotten about another song that deserves to be in the top ten without fucking with my ranking. Sitting around O'Reilly's beer joint telling Screw it, this is my list. 1.5 is One-Eyed Riley. One-Eyed Riley is the apex uncle and ladies song. We get a lot of songs like this in this game, but... Not only is the concept unique for the choice of songs in RDR2, a brazen fool sleeping with a murderous man's daughter, it's just so funny and entertaining. Maybe a bit less loose than other songs, but this feels like the stock standard RDR2 campfire song. The perfect example. Solid musically, if simple obviously, with very witty and entertaining lyrics. <laughs> Funny ad-libs and the string mutes in the chorus really help this song stand out. Uncle really does have a way with the ladies. Fresh fish. <laughs> <laughs> and now, after much trouble and turmoil and a, a few drinks, we have reached we have reached the number one. My number one best. Favoritest song is When I was just glad you know I met a gal from old Bordeaux She had blonde hair and blue eyes too Let me ride on the ring dang do The ring dang do now Number one Ring Dang Do. Of course it was gonna be the number one. Whenever I hear this song at camp, I'll barge over like Arthur's found the cure to Limbogo and really wants to tell Uncle. It's probably the most popular song in the bunch and for good reason. It's funny, it incorporates a lot of the other members and it can happen twice in gameplay. Arthur sounds more committed to singing than ever, even with the lines he doesn't know. He's very proud to say Maidenhead. Maidenhead. The subject matter of the song is about some dude sleeping with a chick and then her dad finds out and sends her to the house. It's everything the song should be. Sexist and simple. Capping it all off with Arthur calling Uncle a dirty man at the end. A dirty man. Like he wasn't singing louder than anyone else. Brilliant. I honestly don't know what else I can say about this song. Other than... <clears throat> when I was just a lad, you know I met this gal from old Bordeaux she had blonde hair and blue eyes too And she let me ride on the ring dang do The ring dang do Now what is that? It's soft and round like a pussycat It's got a hole in the middle and it's split in two That's what you call a ring dang do She took me down into a cellar, said that I was a mighty fine fella, fed me wine and whiskey too, let me ride on the ring dang do, the ring dang do, now what is that, it's soft and right like a pussycat, it's got a hole in the middle that's been too. That's what you call a ring dang do. My father came in and angrily said, You have lost your meaning and pack your bags and your coat tags too. Make a living off the ring dang do. The ring dang do, now what is that? The soft and round like a pussycat. Got a hole in the middle and it's split in two. That's what you call a ring dang do. off 
to be a whore Hung a sign upon a door Dollar each and flee for two Take a crack at my ring dang do me the ring dang do Now what is that? You're soft around like a pussy cat Got a hole in the middle of the street That's what you call That's what you call That's what you call the ring dang Hello, I'm Sober Now. Thank you for watching this silly video and taking the time to learn about how amazing camps are in Red Dead Redemption 2. Most of the time. That's the thing. Anything that uh, works in Red Dead Redemption 2 feels like it should have most of the time written next to it. Never do the songs waver though. So that's why I wanted to close out the year with this fun little video about drinking and singing songs, which is what we should all be doing these holidays. I'll be back next year with some new videos. The titles I'll put up now. So uh, yeah, these are some of the projects I'll be working on in 2022. Thank you so much to anyone who's watched my videos, I really appreciate every view. Remember to look after your friends, especially if they're named Lenny. I hope everyone had a good Christmas, or anything else you may celebrate.